ten years ago. The year is 2006. Doctor Who has only just returned with David Tennant now taking over the reins from Christopher Eccleston along with Billy Piper and it's fair to say the new series was still in its infancy. There was one episode however, one offbeat episode that has become the new series' ultimate Marmite episode that remains to this day. Love and Monsters the result of an experimental approach to a Doctor Who episode, this featured the incredibly infamous monster of the Absorbomov, notable for being created by a small child in a Blue Peter competition. The one who's going to win this grand prize yeah. are going to come down to the Doctor Who studios, they're going to see the monster being made, they're going to come on set, they're going to meet me and Billy and everyone else. Who is it? It is uh, William! Oh! The Absorbaloff is a green sumo creature, an extra touch of detail, and done it well and made him really looking like he's fat and everything. And that little kid grew up to be... Spider-Man. But ten years on, what does he think about the whole thing? Well, ten years on, it's the man who made the most beloved <laughs> Doctor Who monster ever, William Grantham, inventor of the aforementioned Absorbaloff. How are you today? I'm alright. I'm a little tired, but I'm alright. Good, good. So, nine-year-old you, what went through your mind when you were inventing the Absorbaloff, who has taken quite a standing amongst the monsters of Doctor Who, for better or for worse? Well, at that time, I really wanted a remote-controlled Dalek, and I saw that you could win a remote-controlled Dalek in the competition. I didn't even know that, like, that the enemy would be featured. I'm not actually sure if that's something they announced. But, yeah, that is literally a cop-out of an origin story, I know, but still. A remote-controlled Dalek is a pretty sweet gift, to be fair. But, like, what's it like looking back? Is there anything you'd change about it now that you're older? Probably the name. Like, change it to Elzorb or something. Like, because Absorbalov's a stupid name. Hmm, well, on that sort of note, what would you say about the episode Love of Monsters now, looking back on it? I think it's a nice idea. But the execution wasn't perfect. But at the end of the day, I think the idea that Russell T. Davis had of doing a parody on Doctor Who fandom with the archetypes in check really did... He really represented it well, I think. And especially given the backlash that came after this episode, the character of Victor Kennedy suddenly becomes very real. Well, again, on that sort of note, what do you think of the fan reaction? I mean, like, it's obvious that there is a certain amount of hyperbole about it. Like, some fans calling it the worst episode ever. What are your thoughts on that, sir? Honest to God, I just want everybody to know they've been had. Like, <laughs> it wasn't my intention to make a terrible monster, but not everybody can say, hey, I triggered the entire Doctor Who community. <laughs> <laughs> I made them have temper tantrums. Like, okay, maybe Stephen Moffat can say that, but I too can say that, and that feels good. It, it's just adorable. So nowadays, you're a bit of a filmmaker, so tell me, what are you working on these days? Um, well, as people who know me, including yourself, because we're like buddies, we're like bros. Oh, um, yeah, like, as most people know, I'm quite obsessed with Marvel and DC superheroes. And I've been wanting to do a low-budget, fun sort of parody of this that sort of takes advantage of the best things about their characters. So I've formed a little sitcom called Silver Age After Hours, which like sort of puts our superheroes and pop culture characters, including horror villains and some of everybody's favourite Star Wars characters, into this one little village where they can all interact as just ordinary people. Hmm, so kind of like Marvel Animal Crossing then? Yeah, it's like Marvel Animal Crossing, exactly. I've never played that game. Well then, good luck with that, and thank you for taking the time out of your not very busy day. I'll have you know I work a repetitive job in retail, so to say my day is not very busy is hyperbole in itself. <laughs> so do I. Yeah, but, like, who are you? This is not the time for an existential crisis. Putting up on me. <laughs> well, thank you. And see ya! This was lame.